All right, ready? David? Yeah, Mike, what, can you just talk about this game? Like you said, you'd like to see it for the development of your younger players, just your pressure coming out of this game. Tonight. I mean, I think you first have to address it. And things like that. So it, it, that's obviously an opportunity for these young players to learn from. Uh, the best thing about our preseason is really to be consistent with what we talked about. We, we've been able to generate an enormous number of reps for our young players. So as we walk into the meetings tomorrow, I, I think we'll have clear information uh, to make some hard decisions. Does a day like today make you question the depth of what you actually have in the, in the back end of the roster? Oh, I don't think so. I, I think it's like anything in, in this in this time of year. It's, it's it's not who you play. It's how you, it's how you play your guys. Um, you know, regardless of the matchups and how it sorts out on the other side of it. You know, because you know um, I don't I had no idea what their plan was going in, how long their you know their stars going to play and all that. So that's I've always felt that's irrelevant. It's just to get the combination of sets for your players and, and create. You know, you're looking for a young guy to step up and, and do some things. And, and there was moments that we had that. But I mean, you know, most of our issues were self-inflicted uh, in the second half. You know, I, I felt like we, we were ebb and flow there in the first half and it was, it was starting to get some momentum, you know, particularly at the end of the second quarter. So um, but it was would have liked to have seen a cleaner game from our guys in the second half. Uh, it didn't happen. But uh, like I said, the best thing is is, is the amount of football that particularly our draft class and our younger players were able to, to you know, participate in the whole preseason. With a little less than two weeks here to the opener, how do you assess where you stand and, and how much work needs to be done to be ready for that opener? I mean, Captain Obvious, we're full steam ahead to Tampa. I mean, we, we, we've lost some opportunities uh, to practice, you know, with Dak. So, you know, now, now that he's back, it's, you know, my, our focus really – uh, you know, part of Kellen's focus and, and Dak's focus really has been this past week. You know, we, we need to get as much in as we possibly can between now and the Tampa Bay game. So our focus is on is on Tampa. So you wanted to drive with young guys today, but you also kept 30 guys out. Was that keeping them healthy? That's also part of the focus for Tampa. Actually. Yeah, definitely. I mean, that's you know, in in a, in a normal in a normal um, uh, setting of camp, we we may have been able to do a little more. Um, you know, work on the first game in this in this last week. You know, this is a, this is a new schedule with the three preseason games. I know we played the, you know the fourth with the add one early, but you know having the bye week before the first game and on top of the bye week, there's you know there's certain you know mandates. You know whether it's you know three or four days off and during that bye week, so there's some things you got to work through. So um, I would like to maybe spent more time on Tampa this past week. It just it just didn't work out that way. What were you able to learn? Today about Cooper and Gilbert and where things stand uh, with that. I thought they were solid. Um, I, I thought both those guys, you know, did what you're, you know, they they, they had clean plays. I, you know, I, you know, so much of playing the quarterback position in the preseason and especially in the second half of preseason games because I've, I've coached it that way for for decades is things are going to go wrong. And um, you know, Ben DiNucci had a number of situations where the route wasn't right or you know different situation. You got to play through that. That that's part of the adversity. Of playing preseason football, you don't like it. You know, like it's not okay that, that it goes on. Uh, but every quarterback that's played in this league, uh, particularly you know in his younger years and plays in his second half of these games, that, that stuff like that happens. And you know, and that that's part of you know handling adversity. So uh, it's just you know we weren't very clean in the passing game in the second half, but we, you know we have to respond. And and you know, I think you know that there was a little silver lining there with the last drive, you know, going down and, and scoring the touchdown. Coach, how do you get with 11 days until uh, that season opener? How do you get, if any, rust off of Dak? What do these next uh, week and a half look like for Dak, getting him ready for regular season speed? Well, it's, I mean, it's really what I just said. We're, we're going to do everything we can within, you know, because you know the players are off till Thursday so we, we won't be back together our first team meeting will be Thursday we go Thursday Friday and then they're off again Saturday and these these this is the new schedule and then um, you know so we'll go Thursday Friday they're off Saturday and we'll go Sunday Sunday to Wednesday and get on the plane and go get it so we'll do everything we can in that time frame how did Doug handle his play calling responsibilities today and what did you learn from that situation how did I was Doug, next Doug oh, I thought Doug I thought 
Doug, Doug called a good game. Um, he was quick with his calls. He was assertive. Um, you know, adjustments was clean. Um, I thought J Doug and Joe both did a, did a nice job today with their communication and just the you know the process of the personnel and you know doing those things. But I mean, it's like anything. I, you know, I wish they probably both wish the result was a little different. But uh, I thought both guys did a really nice job. Any word on the severity of Kelvin Joseph? Uh, I do not. No, I don't have any injuries. For you. Rich, do you have anything? Have Groin reevaluated tomorrow. Joe's all back. One of the positives you talked about before, you just feel good about how quickly the defense came together with some things they did in the preseason and, and being able to work Parsons in the way you did, the way he can do for you. I'm sorry, David, how quick what came so together? Just, just the defensively, how you were able yeah. to come together. Is that one of the positives? And maybe Michael. Micah Parsons getting an idea he can do a lot of I, I definitely I, I think just the the depth that we have on defense is clearly evident I think you can see that very early in camp and um, the defense frankly was ahead of the offense you know almost the whole way I mean the offense had some you know with some good practices there um, against those guys on defense but you know I'm, I'm very happy with the different combinations of players the different you know the personnel group flexibility that it gives us but no, um, I think I think our defense has had a good training camp. Mike, what's it, what's it like being a head coach, at least ex coach on the bench, when you're having to make these tough calls, to talk to players, and what takes in the room, and what kind of strengths are those for you? These are the worst days. Um, just even the call up there. I mean, you you know you you lose you lose by a couple scores, and you know you should be feeling one way. And all I could be thinking, all all I've been thinking about is what's what's in front of me. So um, it, the next 48 hours is 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 clearly the worst part of the job. Clearly. Cooper and Garrett, how close has that been in your mind, and how will you evaluate the full body of work now? Well, I mean, that's that's really what these next 24 hours will be. You know, we'll watch it as a staff tomorrow, and then, you know, we'll, we'll get together with, um, you know, with Jerry and Steven and Will tomorrow afternoon, and we'll start the process. What did you like and what you saw from guys like Rondell and Israel on the interception? Uh, I think, you know, once again, I, I thought we were starting to get some momentum there right before the half. That was a, that was a big play, um, you know, and that was – that's something that we really, particularly our young guys, uh, we were really emphasize is more hits on the ball. You know, we need to get more hits on the ball. I think they've done a good job with that in practice, but the application to the game is not quite what it needs to be. So that, that'll be obviously a big focus for us as we move into Tampa. Did 11 days go by fast or slow? Oh, it'll go by fast once uh, Wednesday hits. Yeah. The next two days will be slow. Coach, how do you feel about that challenge? Uh, you say at full speed ahead in Tampa, you got Tom Brady reigning Super Bowl champ. I mean, I look forward to it. I mean, we, you know, we talked a little bit last night. It's, you know, we started this this quest on April nineteenth. There's three hundred days that that are available to to, to to reach a Super Bowl. So, and everything in between there is, is you have to keep your eye on the target, you know, one day at a time. So, I mean, it's it's the first game. It's the most important game because it's the next game. And there's some good coaching one on one, you know, stuff for you. But, um, you know, I just think that, you know, it's I've I've, I've played in that game. I've been on both sides of the the field in, in the opening game. Uh, it's, it's a ton of energy. It's uh, it's a great game to compete in. Um, and our guys are, you know, trust me, we're looking forward to it. And uh, we can't wait to get there. How active do you think you guys might be in the waiver period? Just be, last year, there was no preseason film to look at and yeah. get reads on guys. Do you think those teams will be more active? I mean, that's a great question. I mean, really, I mean, what's how's it going to go this year? You know, I just think uh, it's no different than, you know, answering these questions before the draft. I mean, you know, what? It's been a while since we've been in a normal year, so I'm curious to see how, you know, if it's going to be very active or it's going to be slow. So uh, it's clearly a wait to see, you know, opportunity, and uh, so we'll see how it goes. I don't know what to expect, to be honest with you. Any update on Lil' Cotton Stinger? Have they subsided, or do you think it's going to be a, a, a problem going forward? Um, just you know, really, just you held him out of practice yesterday, and then wasn't available today. So I mean, I I, I would think he would be available next week. I have I have nothing. To think differently at this point. Coach Malik Hooker got to play quite a bit tonight. Have you got a good, better feel of where he is coming off the injury, coming you know all the way through preseason? Um, you know, not not really. I mean, I, I, I'm anxious to watch him. You know, watch the video on him. I mean, he's you know he's done a really nice job. Uh, you know, arrived late and just you know you know we wanted to be very sure before we put him out there. So uh, you, you you wish you had a little more opportunity for him, but uh, he he's been a Excellent fit for us. I mean, he's he's done everything. He's hit every target uh, up to this point. So you know, I'm, I'm anxious to watch the tape. Mike, uh, it was just announced that the Saints are going to be practicing here this week with the Hurricane. Can you just kind of speak to NFL teams kind of helping each other out and when circumstances like this you know emerge? 
Uh, definitely, and, and I, in the in call the Jones family because I mean it, no, no one does it better than they do. Um, so yeah, it's uh, in having an opportunity to, to coach in New Orleans, you know, and, and gone through this, you know, this the hurricane uh, challenge. I mean, it's a tremendous amount of stress on the on the families, you know, of the Saints. I mean, obviously the whole region, the Gulf Coast region. So um, you know, my heart's goes out to the, to those guys. So um, it's just glad to be, you know. From the Jones family, I'm, I'm sure it's just great to be in a position to help. From what, from what you know now, I think you still have four guys on the COVID list. Will they still be on the COVID list by the time you need to make your cut on Tuesday, or do you expect any of them to be off? And how's that My understanding is if we stay, you know, if we stay, if it stays clean from this point forward, that I think you know, come Thursday, we'll have everyone in the building. Coach, how do you feel this year going into the regular season compared to? Last year, your first year as head coach here in Dallas. I mean, it's, there's no comparison. I think it's you know this this time last year we were we were trying to figure out you know with the COVID protocol really you know just you know how the meetings were set up. So it was just a totally different climate. You know, I, I think just the way our football op operations has handled you know the challenges past week is just is a great example of how different it is. So um, there is. A sense of regularity and normalcy to this season, and, and um, you know, and it's my job to try to keep it that way as much as possible for the players. And I, I think with the resources and experiences uh, from last year, we'll be better served to, to anticipate these challenges. Coach, how confident are y'all in Greg? Last one, last one, how confident are y'all in Greg Zerline's health, and did you see as much as you wanted to from him today? Yeah, definitely. I was excited to get that shot right before halftime. You know, I just wanted to see the ball come off his foot. Frankly, from the, from my angle, I thought it was in. Um, so, and then, you know, just to get a couple kickoffs. So that, that's, to me, that's exactly what we needed. Uh, so it was, it was good to get them out there.